We are going to go ahead and kick off this inaugural Champions of Healthcare Awards Breakfast. So good morning. Good morning. Thank you. It is a fabulous day. Um, for some of us who have been working on this event, and many of you in the audience, it's hard to believe that the morning is finally here. My name is Jackie Dazelski. I am on staff at the Manatee Chamber of Commerce, and I am blessed to be able to work with our healthcare initiatives at the Chamber. Is that beeping is something that we can probably take care of, I hope. So what I would like to do now that I've gotten you all quieted down and seated, if you could stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. As we get started this morning, I would like to ask um, our elected officials to please stand or raise your hand and be recognized for helping us kick off this inaugural Champions of Healthcare Awards breakfast. I know we've got a number of our county commissioners as well as school board here as well, so please give a round of applause to our elected officials who have joined us this morning. And you probably noticed as you walked in as well, many of us feel like generals um, this morning with ribbons on our name tags. So just a little bit of an explanation. We have ribbons that are recognizing um, the almost 80 individuals and organizations that were nominated for our awards this year, um, as well as our sponsors. Thank you so much to the companies that have stepped forward to financially support the Champions of Healthcare Awards Breakfast, so you'll notice those as well. Our finalists have ribbons as well, the 21 individuals and organizations who are finalists for this first year awards program. And then the two winners that we had predetermined and announced, which is our Youth Volunteer Award winner, Zachary, has a purple ribbon. Um, and then Patricia um, Glass with our Lifetime Achievement Award as well has a purple ribbon this morning. So congratulations to all of you um, that are our finalists or nominees. <laughs> You'll notice in your program we have a lot of names listed on a lot of pages, but one page that I'd really like to draw your attention to is that page that lists all of the finalists and the nominees, because if it weren't for the amazing people and institutions and programs that are contributing so much really outside their daily jobs and the missions of their organizations to do even more in healthcare than they're asked to do, um, this wouldn't be possible and we would not enjoy the quality of life that we have in Mantee County. So what I would like every nominee for the Champions of Healthcare Awards this year, would all of our nominees please stand and be recognized? And several of you not only are individual nominees, but your organizations are nominees as well. So what a testament to not only what you all are doing as people, but what we are all doing as a community as well. I would also like to thank our sponsors. As I mentioned earlier, were it not for the support of a number of, of businesses within the community, this would not be possible this morning. So I would like to thank our presenting sponsor, Regions Bank. Our scholarship sponsor, Blaylock Walters. Our major, major media sponsor, the Bradenton Herald and Lakewood Ranch Herald. Our corporate sponsors, All Trust Insurance, Blake Medical Center, Manatee Diagnostic Center, Manatee Memorial Hospital, Shin and Company, and the State College of Florida. Thank you very much for your support. And then would it be a community event without the support of METV, Manatee Educational Television? So thank you so much to Charles and his crew um, for being here, for supporting us, running our AV, and then taping this so that we can put, push all of this good news out to the community. Thank you to METV. 
And my last three slides are, are thanking uh, our platinum and gold sponsors at the chamber. These are organizations that step up and make an investment in the chamber beyond their dues each year. And our platinum mem members are Ottaway Ford, the Bradenton Herald, Bright House Networks, Manatee County Government, Manatee Memorial Hospital, the Mosaic Company, NDC Construction, the Pittsburgh Pirates and Bradenton Marauders, Sarasota Bradenton International Airport, Turner Tree and Landscape, um, and I think that was my list, rounds it out, all 11. And our gold members, Manatee County Rural Health Services, Malden and Jenkins, and Suncoast Business Technology. So thank you to those organizations for their ongoing annual commitment to the chamber. And then finally, we also um, are going to be taking uh, beautiful shots of all of our finalists and winners after the awards program. So any of you with those red, um, those red ribbons um, who will want to come up to the stage at the end, we have Odell Photography here today to support us in taking all of the photos that will be featured in all the publicity that we do post-event for the awards. So thank you to Odell Photography. And finally, you all saw when you walked in, hopefully, everybody gets presents. So that's a great way to start a breakfast. We want to thank all of our sponsors who contributed a lot of fun health-related items um, to your goodie bags this morning. So take those home and enjoy those. And thank you again to our sponsors for those goodie bags. And now I have the honor of turning over the mic to Tom Seguin. Tom is the chairman of the board of the Manatee Chamber of Commerce this year and the owner of Suncoast Gem Labs. Tom? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, as Jackie mentioned, my name is Tom Seguin, and I own Suncoast Gem Lab, and I am the 2013 uh, chairman of the chamber board. Or the chamber board. Thank you. What a crowd! This is, I just can't believe how good of a turnout we had. It's, and I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out today and, to, and supporting Champions inaugural year, the Champions of Healthcare Awards. It really, really, looking at the crowd, it's hard to believe that this is our, this is our first year. As Jackie shared with you, um, this awards program has been in the works now for almost two years. And we owe our thanks to all of those people who are serving on the Chamber's Healthcare Committee. And in particular, a special thanks to Dr. Chet Evans and for his idea and leadership behind the Champions of Healthcare Awards. And we're sorry to say that uh, he has left the area um, and so he's greatly missed. But anyway, uh, we, we want to thank him and, and everyone on the, on the Healthcare Committee for their hard work on this, on this event. Our intent here is to create a lasting, high-profile awards program that recognizes the incredible accomplishments of people, programs, and institutions that make healthcare in Manatee County something that's really very special. Our Chamber Healthcare Committee has a number of accomplishments to their credit. First of all, it's the largest of 25 committees in the Chamber with more than 40 people serving. So if you're a member of the Chamber's Healthcare Committee or the Chamber or the Business Wellness Task Force, would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you all very much. Um, and so, the accomplishments that the healthcare committee has done to date, it has successfully lobbied for reduced impact fees for the construction of medical facilities. Um, used to be that the, uh, the impact fees and construction fees were higher for medical facilities than for, than for regular buildings, so then that's just not right. Um, the committee has successfully advocated for the creation of a medical residency program, which was started at Manatee Memorial Hospital two years ago. And as we all know, if uh, residents uh, come and move to an area, they're much more likely to stay in that area. And so it, it, it's a big, uh, big important thing for our, the quality of our health care in this area. Um, the health care committee supported the location of a trauma center in Manatee County at Blake Medical Center advocated on a number of legislative priorities locally in Tallahassee and in Washington, D.C. The committee launched the uh, manateehealth.com as a portal for employers and employees to find healthcare resources in Manatee County. 
uh, helped form the Manatee Healthcare Alliance as a new nonprofit that's dedicated to setting the vision for an integrated, accessible healthcare system in Manatee County that is going to help us achieve the goal of becoming the healthiest county in the state, and that's the goal. Um, and now today we're presenting you the Champions of Healthcare Awards. I want to talk briefly about um, another issue that uh, I know many of you are aware of, um, and that is, uh, and that the healthcare committee is working on, is the passage of the June 18th um, one half cent sales tax for healthcare. We support the chamber supports, and I personally support the passage of this sales tax as a way to replace the soon to be depleted healthcare trust fund, and to fund critical healthcare services for the working poor the elderly, and children in our community in a more equitable way. So I, I ask you to please educate yourself and your employees on this critical issue, and be sure and get out to vote. Um, there, are, there is some informational material about this um, that is on our registration table, so please uh, pick up some of that on your, on your way out today. And finally, I have to give significant credit to Jonathan Fleece, who is a partner in the Blaylock Walters Law Firm, which is our, our newest platinum member at the Chamber. Jonathan chaired the Chamber's Healthcare Committee for three years and has served as chairman of the Manatee Healthcare Alliance as well. Jonathan, where, where is Jonathan? Jonathan, thank you very, very much for your leadership, vision, and inspiration. <laughs> Your determination is courageous. Thanks again. Now I'll turn it back over to Jackie. Thank you. And now before we enjoy breakfast, I would like Ashley Kness with the Easter Seals of Southwest Florida to come up and to deliver our invocation. And then we will invite you to enjoy breakfast. Good morning, happy, shiny people. How are you doing? It's my pleasure to be here to offer the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is an awesome privilege to be here today among these wonderful people who have chosen to live a path in service to the betterment of the human condition, the champions of health care. There is no higher calling on a person's life than to do this. We thank you for the nominees for each one who's chosen their life's work in this area. We thank you for the organizations who also seek to serve our community from the least to the most of these. We thank you for this food, which we do not in any way take for granted. We thank you for our health, and we ask today that you would help us each be a blessing to everyone with whom we come in contact. And we thank you for the tremendous blessing of knowing each other and gathering here today. In your life-affirming name we pray, amen. We are going to go ahead and continue with our awards program breakfast, although I know most of us would like to just take the day off, stroll up and down Main Street and do some shopping. Some of us have our supervisors here and that won't be possible. So good morning. I hope you all are enjoying your breakfast. I now have the distinct honor of turning over the rest of this morning's program to Jonathan Fleece. Jonathan, who is a principal with the Blaylock Walters Law Firm. You've already heard him introduced by Tom Seguin, our chairman. Jonathan also chairs our health care committee at the chamber and has done that for three years, as well as is the immediate past chair of the Manatee Health Care Alliance. He is also a nationally known author of the new Health Age book. I know many in the room um, have consulted that book, if not read it cover to cover, to learn about health care reform and what the future of health care and its delivery system is in our country. So without further ado, Jonathan. The rest of the program is yours. Good morning. Please continue to enjoy your breakfast as the uh, official program begins. And before we take one more bite, I want to thank Jackie Dazelski for all of her amazing work, commitment, dedication. To, uh, to really pull this off. And then to Liz as well, also with the chamber and, and all of the wonderful staff that we have. There is no podium to put this bottle of water, but I'm gonna need it. So I will put it down here. I would like for a moment to lift everybody 
out of your, um, your chair or your moment that you're experiencing and drill down to the true purpose and meaning of why we are here today. And I'm going to throw out a number that is going to have a lot of meaning, hopefully, in a few moments as I walk you through this. The number is 2.5 billion. 2.5 billion is the number. Now the next act that I'd like for you to do is everybody raise your right hand. This is not an oath. Put it up to your heartbeat pulse in your neck. And just feel, listen, and sense the beat of your own heart. The average human heart beats 2.5 billion times in a lifetime. We are living in a country and in a society where health and health care is missing the mark of what it's all about. Health and health care has become a political charged topic. Health and health care has become a massive economic issue. And it is important to embrace policy, politics, and the economics of health care. But at the end of the day, health and health care is about those 2.5 billion heartbeats that occur over the average lifespan. And ultimately that is why we are all here this morning. And all of us in the room are the type of people that frankly are committed every day, not to the heartbeats of, our, of ourselves. We're committed to the heartbeats of our neighbors, of our families, our loved ones, our patients. And I really want to just pause for a moment and thank all of you for your incredible commitment and dedication to those 2.5 billion heartbeats. So give yourself a round of applause for being so committed to this. I'm going to quickly introduce my son, Colin Fleece. This is Take Your Child to Work Day. And it just so happened to be this was going to be an interesting work day. And if there's one thing that I would like for my son, Colin, to take home about what it is that daddy does every day, it's this statement, Colin. Make every heartbeat count. That's what daddy does. So let's begin the program with first another thank you to Tommy, Jamie, Holly, and the staff of the Polo Grill for this delicious breakfast. And it was on the healthier side, so hopefully you didn't miss your bacon and sausage. It's hard to believe that this morning has finally arrived. As Jackie shared with us earlier, we are so pleased to have received 80 nominations for this inaugural year of the Champions of Healthcare Awards. As you might imagine, it was an incredibly difficult task to select the 21 finalists and eight winners from among our nominees. Every, and I repeat, every nominee is a winner and contributes to the quality of healthcare in Manatee County and the quality of life that we all cherish. We had six fantastic individuals who were tasked with selecting our finalists and the winners this year. Each of these people gave many, many hours of their time. They reviewed hundreds of pages of information on all of our nominees. The choices were incredibly difficult for our first year. And I know that these nominees and the finalists will be nominated again for the amazing work that they do in our community. So I would like to uh, say a special thanks to our judges and ask that each of them stand and then we could acknowledge them at the end. Burt Beard with Manatee Memorial Hospital, Beth Bush, Prater Willie Syndrome Association, Christy Cardillo with Shin and Company, Justin Doss with Blake Medical Center, Ray Dowling, Florida Power and Light, and the Manatee Chamber of Commerce's Chairman Elect, and Valerie Vale, the Manatee County Medical Association President. Please thank our judges. I 
I now have the distinct honor and privilege of introducing the 21 people, programs, and institutions that were selected as finalists this year. I ask that each of you stand and remain standing. This is health exercise, get the blood pumping, uh, while I go through the list and then we will acknowledge uh, everyone at the end of the, uh, of the list. We have numerous categories, the first being the innovation and research category. And the finalists in this category are the Ross Camp Institute, Dr. E.J. Sanchez, Cardiovascular and Vein Center of Florida, and the Tavern Program at Blank Medical Center. Our next category is in the Institution and Program category. The finalists are Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine, Manatee Glens, and We Care Manatee. In the Allied Health Professional category, the finalists are Ray Fusco with Manatee County Rural Health Services, Diane Lehman, Blake Medical Center, and Anita Weaver, State College of Florida. In the nurse category, our finalists are Terry Dwarway with Blake Medical Center, Patty Madsen, Blake Medical Center, and Catherine Baines, Lakewood Ranch Medical Center. In the individual merit category, Graham Berquis, volunteer, Dr. Richard Connard, Mary Ruiz, Manatee Glens, and Dr. Stephen Tensworth, Tensworth Orthodontics. And in the physician category, Dr. Kevin Boyer, Pinnacle Medical Group, Dr. Peter Matina, Peter J. Matina, Dermatology, Dr. Andre Renard, Parkway Plastic Surgery. And in our final two categories, we've already announced the winners, and you will hear much more about these individuals in a few minutes, but please allow them to also stand with the other finalists uh, as I call their names. In our youth volunteer category, Zachary Dunn, a student at Southeast High School, and our inaugural Lifetime Achievement honoree, Patricia M. Glass. Please join me in giving all these finalists a rousing, rowdy cheer of appreciation. Okay, now the moment that we've all been waiting for. I have the honor of announcing the winners of the first of several categories, and this is really a special treat uh, for all of you this morning because each winner is going to be announced and then a short video will be played that will highlight some of the accomplishments and impacts that these individuals have had in the community. I'll ask each winner when I announce your name to please come to the stage after the video introduction so everybody will know how wonderful you are and you will receive your reward. They're also welcome to share a few words with us um, once you come to the stage and receive your reward. Charles, drum roll please. There we go. <laughs> Our first category this morning is in the innovation and research area. This category seeks to recognize a person or institution whose work within their field has resulted in a breakthrough or major development in medical or health sciences. I believe that most of you here this morning will recognize the name of our winner, but many in the community may not. The research being conducted at this institution has the potential to impact our understanding and treatment of significant disease and diseases across the world. Please help me in congratulating the Ross Camp Institute, our 2013 Champions of Healthcare Award winner in the innovation and research category. We have, a short, we have a short video to share with you in which Greg Bussell helps tell the story of why the work at Ross Camp is quietly um, changing the world right here in Manatee County. Manatee County is blessed to have a facility of this quality uh, available to us and doing the kind of work that they're doing. This is a world-class institution. They have uh, researchers and scientists from all over the world that are uh, drawn here to Manatee County because of the quality of the research, the quality of the equipment, 
and the science that's being utilized uh, in that facility. It's an absolute uh, gem of a facility that m many people in our county and in our area are not aware even exists. In addition to Alzheimer's research, uh, the Roskamp Institute has expanded their research into areas having to do with uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome and other war-related and injury-related ramifications related to dementia. In addition to the pure research, the Roskamp Institute is affording students in our area the opportunity to work alongside their researchers in uh, internship programs and even uh, to go so far as uh, doctorate or master's degree level work. I think it's important to note that Bob and Diane Roskamp had the vision to form the Roskamp Foundation, which was the initial funding source for the Institute. And without their vision, the Roskamp Institute would not be the quality facility that it is today. I now have. I ask that a representative from the Ross Camp Institute please come to accept this award. Well, uh, first of all, thank you. My name is Jerry Smith and I'm the CFO. CFOs don't do too much scientific work. That's the reason we brought someone who does. <clears throat> But it's a great honor to receive this. Anytime you give us an opportunity to talk about the Ross Camp uh, Institute, we will take that opportunity. Just want to make a few points. Uh, Greg, you did a great job, and uh, I guess we're going to have to put him on the payroll. <coughs> anyway, our mission is to find cures for diseases of the mind. And <coughs> we're a 5013C charity, public charity. We employ 55 plus PhD candidates, scientists and we are staff. We're led by Dr. Mike Mullen and Fiona Crawford. <clears throat> Our core competency there is drug discovery. That's what these people do. They can discover drugs. And we have an Alzheimer drug in phase three in Europe developed right here in, at our institute. Quite an accomplishment for an institute of our size. We do research in MS, Parkinson's, other diseases, autism. We also have a big program in TBI, that's uh, traumatic brain injury. Dr. Crawford, she is a world-renowned expert in this area. We do a lot of work for the Department of Defense and for our military people there. In addition to that, we have a PhD program, so we're training PhDs for the future, trying to keep talent right here in this area. This is good for everyone. Last but not least, once we find some compound that we think has some capability, we spin that out into a for-profit company. So again, we're trying to keep commerce right here in the, the city, right here in the area. We thank you again for this. Thank you. Thank you. Our next category is the institution and program category. This is designed to recognize the impact of a facility, business, nonprofit, school, government agency, or a program within an institution for its impact on healthcare in our community. Our winning, winner this morning was nominated several times for a number of different programs and partnerships, including volunteerism in the community, helping address physician recruitment and retention, and placing Manatee County as a destination for the training of professionals in medicine, pharmacy, and dentistry. Please help me in honoring LECOM as our 2013 Champions of Healthcare Award winner in the institution and program category. We ask that Dr. Robert George, we ask Dr. Robert George to help us understand the impact of LECOM, its programs, and its students have here in Manatee County. Another video. LECOM as an entity includes both the College of Osteopathic Medicine, the uh, School of Pharmacy, and the uh, School of Dental Medicine. We uh, opened our doors in 2004 with the medical school. 
Uh, in 2006, we uh, brought on a program in uh, pharmacy. It's called a PharmD program. And this past July, we were uh, able to start our first dental class of uh, 100 students. LECOM uh, came to the area to fill a need of physician shortage. We were able to develop a residency training program uh, at Manatee Memorial Hospital, uh, which trains both internal medicine residents, family practice residents, and we have what is called a traditional internship track. When people train in an area, they are more likely to stay in that area to practice. We try to reach out both to the uh, elementary, middle, and high schools. Uh, we do programs such as uh, Operation Prom, where we actually do a simulation of a tragic alcohol-related death on prom night. We go to the middle schools and discuss uh, smoking, smoking cessation. We also uh, go into the elementary and middle schools as well to discuss uh, nutrition. I feel the champions of healthcare are our students uh, for what they do for the community. And last year they provided over 20,000 hours of volunteer service. I ask that a representative from LECOM please come to accept this award. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Anthony Ferretti. I'm the Dean of Clinical Education at the school. And um, I want to thank the chamber uh, from the school for this uh, lovely award. Uh, I'd also like to uh, remind you that uh, we're just down the street, down at Lakewood Ranch Boulevard, and you're certainly all welcome to come if you'd like to see either institution or what our institution is about. But the true way to find out what our institution is about is as you go to your doctor's offices, as you go to the hospital, hopefully just for a visit, uh, or the pharmacy, and soon in your dental office, you may find some younger individuals there with white coats on, usually a short white coat, and a patch on one of the arms that says LECOM. That's what we're about. We have uh, approximately 400 students in, in the greater Florida area who are in years three and four. They are my charges. We have about 300 pharmacy students roaming through the area, and soon we'll have about 100 dental students roaming through the area in, in different capacities. This is what LECOM is. It is our, they are the uh, product that we put out. They're fine young ladies and gentlemen, they're professionals, uh, and they do have a great uh, caring uh, built into them, and you'll find them in the community. So if you really want to know what LECOM's about, all that other stuff that my boss said was true, but the students are what LECOM is all about. Thank you very much. I'm going off script, Jackie. This is when everybody gets panicked here within the chamber. Um, <laughs> Dr. Ferretti probably doesn't remember this, but I met him at a social event many years ago when they had first come to the community. And he shared a story with me that I'm going to spend 30 seconds um, sharing with you. How many veterans do we have in the room? If you're a veteran, please stand and be recognized for a moment and remain standing. <laughs> Remember the 2.5 billion heartbeats? Dr. Ferretti saved many, many, many soldiers in the first Gulf War under the Bush administration um, in, in Iraq and Kuwait as an orthopedic surgeon. And that is just one example of the commitment of people that we have in this room to those 2.5 billion heartbeats. There are a lot of 2.5 billion heartbeats on the world today thanks to Dr. Ferretti and what he did for our, our country. Thank you, Dr. Ferretti. Get back on script. Our next category is the Allied Health Professional category. This category seeks to recognize all of those professionals who work in the 
it, whose work is critical to the overall workings of our healthcare system. Physician assistants, educators, administrators, physical therapists, occupational therapists, EMTs, and many, many other allied health professionals. Our winner this morning was nominated for the impact she is making in raising the level of awareness of important health issues and resources. Please help me congratulate Diane Lehman, <laughs> Physician Relations Manager at Blake Medical Center, our 2013 Champions of Healthcare Professional Award winner. Let's hear more about Diane's giving spirit as her coworker, Judy, Julie Galvano, sorry Julie, tells us about Diane. When I first heard about the Champions of Healthcare Award, I automatically thought about Diane Lehman, and I knew that I needed to nominate her for this award. She does so much for the community. Diane is on the We Care Board and also the Healthy Choices Program. But apart from that, one of the most important things that Diane does and that's closest to her heart is working with cancer patients. She does this through working with the American Cancer Society, the Center for Building Hope, and also the Caring Friends Program. She has helped so many patients, survivors, and family members get the resources they need. Diane was instrumental in developing the Cancer Resource Room located at Blake Medical Center. This helps cancer patients and their family members in so many ways. For example, the Resource Room offers healthy eating classes for cancer patients, also aerobics, and if you can believe it, the most popular class is belly dancing. The women absolutely love it. Diane also implemented the MAM and GLAM events and the Hunt for Pink October, which encourages and reminds women about how important it is for them to get their mammograms. Diane does so much for our community, and she never stops. Diane Lehman is a true champion of healthcare. Diane, please come and accept this award. Well, thank you so very much. I'm just honored to be here, and I'm just so thrilled to be the first recipient of this award, award as I also worked at the Chamber of Commerce, and so I appreciate this so very much. Um, it's so important in the community with wellness and screenings, and I'm just thrilled that I have the leadership at our hospital with um, Dan Frederick and Justin Doss. And I couldn't do this without my colleagues, Patty Matson, our patient navigator. She's just right there behind me, helping me with everything. And want to also thank all the other Manage Memorial Lakewood Ranch, all the other healthcare um, companies and people that I get to work with, because we're all in this together and we're working towards the same goal. And thank you so very much for your time. Our next category is the nurse category, which is designed to honor a nurse or a nurse practitioner. We've all met them, those amazing individuals who are entrusted to care for us and our loved ones at the most difficult times in our lives. Today's award winner and all of our nominees in this category deliver off the charts care for patients and their families. She also has come up with inspired ways to go the extra mile for her patients, their comfort and their dignity. Please help me in congratulating Terry Dwarway, RN at Blake Medical Center as our 2013 Champions of Healthcare Award winner in the nurse category. Ruth DiPolitino, Chief Nursing Officer at Blake, helped with the video. Terry Dorier is a person you should know. Terry promotes education and recently has completed her master's degree in nursing. She educates our staff and develops activities to move them up the clinical ladder from nursing assistance to nursing career. Terry saw a significant need for uh, clothing for when our patients go home and developed Terry's closet. Often patients are admitted to our emergency room in their pajamas or uh, clothes uh, that have been ripped based on the fact that they've been through an accident. And so they don't have decent clothes to wear when they're released from the hospital. The closet is a big hit. 
Terry has great organizational skills and her ability to get staff to assist her in this endeavor has increased the clothing in the closet so that when patients are discharged, we have enough available clothes for them. This is important for our patients as when they leave our facility, they want to be able to feel good about how they're getting home. Terry is passionate about a nonprofit organization, Our Kids, and has adopted two sons from the program. Terry is the epitome of a true professional, a leader in the nursing profession, a mother of adopted children, a woman who has worked hard as a full-time worker and a part-time student just completing her master's degree, and lastly, a true humanitarian deserving of this nomination. Terry, please come forward. Well, I don't have a speech ready. Um, thank you very much. Very honored, very humbled. I um, was raised with very good parents overseas in the missionary field. So this is part for my mom who raised me right. I do want to take the opportunity, since I'm up here, at Manatee Memorial, I want to thank a nurse of yours. I met her in the lobby yesterday. My family's from Boston, they're at the marathon. She volunteered at the tent as a nurse. She did wonderful. So whoever that nurse is, thank her. She really did a good job for my family. Thank you. Our next category, one of our broadest, is the Individual of Merit category. Through this award, we strive to honor an individual who may or may not be a healthcare professional, but whose service as a board member, philanthropist, elected official, community leader, or volunteer, whose impact goes beyond his or her day job to improve and support healthcare in Manatee County. This category was one of our largest in terms of the number of nominations, thanks to the service that so many people have given and given our community. This morning's winner, of course, is no exception. With a resume listing volunteer service and leadership to more than 15 nonprofits and associations over the course of his career, this individual impacts healthcare locally as well as on a state and national level. And I've worked side by side with this individual through the Healthcare Alliance, and I will speak personally that it's Oftentimes, you see people get involved in community service for the wrong reasons, but more cases than not, it's for the right reasons. And you can tell it by that person's soul and that person's spirit. And I tell you that this morning's award winner, Dr. Stephen Tinsworth, has that spirit. He is the 2013 Champions of Healthcare Individual of Merit Award winner. Fellow Kiwanian Dave Grantham would like to make a few remarks on a video about Steve. Steve's a great guy. I've gotten to know him personally as well as professionally. We do a lot of work within the community together and he's just one of those people that is not only fun to be around, but, he, but he's, he's just, uh, his enthusiasm is, is very contagious. Steve is active in many national, state, and local organizations. He is truly a leader. The kids of Manatee County and all of us, all citizens of Manatee County, owe Dr. Tinsworth a huge debt of gratitude for his role in getting fluoride added to our water many years ago. Uh, it's something that helps our, our dental health every day and uh, we're, we're indebted to him. Steve and I are both in the Kiwanis Club of Bradenton and we a couple years ago, we started a program called Christmas in August, and uh, he uh, was very unselfish with his time. He checked uh, the teeth of homeless children during this program that we had just before school started. Steve recognized a need for more dental hygienists in our area and was instrumental in getting the curriculum for dental hygienists added at Manatee Community College, now State College of Florida. Steve, I want to congratulate you on your nomination as a champion of healthcare in Manatee County. I know you'll make a great charter member to the new club. Come on down, Steve. Come on down.
I think I'm on the 2.237 <laughs> heartbeats. Um, <laughs> statistics, you know, 72.5% um, of all statistics are made up on the spot. <laughs> so, uh, Roskamp Institute, talking about Alzheimer's. It makes me think of the hereafter. And I'm trying to remember, what am I hereafter? <laughs> uh, I am truly honored by this, and I thank the Chamber for developing this program, not as a winner, but in behalf of the whole community. I think this is a very significant element that you guys have put together and to all the healthcare people in this room who've participated in so many different ways. I'm totally honored to be in the category with people that were listed as nominees and I truly uh, am humbled and appreciate this. Thank you very much. When I was researching um, for the new Health Age book, it absolutely blew me away how much I learned about the importance of dental health and hygiene to our physical condition. Heart disease and many, many chronic diseases are directly tied to our, our, our dental health. And Steve and the wonderful things he does is, is just a great beacon in the community. So great award. Our next category is the physician category. And I'd like to ask Kim Woods, Vice President of Advertising with the Braden and Herald, to please join me on stage to present this award. As Kim makes her way up, I would like to uh, thank our sponsors again for the program. Thank you to Regions Bank, uh, my partners at Blaylock Walters, the Braden and Herald, All Trust Insurance, Blake Medical Center, Manatee Diagnostic Center, Davis is out there somewhere, uh, Manatee Memorial Hospital, Shinning Company, State College of Florida, and then again, Charles and the METV. Thanks again to our sponsors. So Kim, if you will present this award. Thank you, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Bradenton Herald, we are honored to be a part of the Champions of Healthcare Awards. In addition to the coverage METV, we'll give this awards program and all of our nominees, finalists and winners, the Bradenton Herald will dedicate coverage tomorrow and tomorrow's Bradenton Herald and Lakewood Ranch Herald. So please look at the paper tomorrow and online to see the coverage of this event. I have the honor this morning of announcing the winner of the physician category. The judges tell me that this was an extraordinarily difficult category in which to pick just one winner due to the tremendous personal and professional accomplish accomplishments of all the nominees and in particular our three finalists, Dr. Kevin Boyer, Dr. Peter Peter Martina and Dr. Andre Rennert. The nomination packets that were submitted for each of them list countless hours of selfless um, service to, our, to others in our community, to children and the elderly, to the sick, and to those who are the most vulnerable. But they were allowed to only pick one winner this year. We are so pleased to congratulate Dr. Kevin Boyer with Pinnacle Medical Group as our 2013 Champions of Healthcare Award winner in the physician category. We asked Dr. Dunn, excuse me, we asked Dan Fred Frederick, CEO of Blake Medical Center, to share with us on camera a little bit about what Dr. Boyer is doing to give back to our community. Dr. Boyer is a champion of health care in, in uh, our community because of his deep dedication to, to his patients, uh, his ability to communicate and connect with, with patients and staff and coordinate just some, some very complex care. But I think also because of his genuine caring for the community, you know, through his involvement with LifeLink, which is our community organization that gets uh, organ donations from people and, and their families. It, it's a very delicate thing. 
to be dealt with, you know, a very uh, trying time for people. The establishment of, of the Kevin Boyer Foundation to kind of perpetuate health careers. You know, we, we talk a lot uh, in, in our health care committees, you know, here at the chamber and, and, and in the community about the lack of people going into health care and, and having a good qualified uh, uh, medical staff when, when kind of we all are, are, are uh, past our, our prime with this. And by funding 66 students, you know, or helping fund them, I obviously hasn't paid for all their education, but, but, but to, to take the initiative to, to form the foundation and fund the foundation so that 66 students in Manatee County, it makes their dream of, of pursuing a medical career a little bit closer for each of them. Dr. Boyer, please join us on stage to accept your award. My legs are shaking. <laughs> this is a place I never anticipated being. It's, it's a tremendous honor, especially when you see the list of people nominated. It, it doesn't feel like I be, belong up here. There's such tremendous integrity out there in the audience and out in the community. <clears throat> and I'm about two million heartbeats in the next 12 minutes. <laughs> um, I'll talk about Jonathan. I got to know Jonathan before he was even, I think, comfortable speaking in front of people. So it's tremendous to see him become such a great leader and inspiration to our community as well. Um, I can't say enough thanks to the chamber and this, this means a lot to me for all we do. And <clears throat> as far as my foundation goes, this year I'll cross the $100,000 mark of, of giving scholarships to high school seniors who are going into health care. And it's fully funded by me, but if anybody's interested, you can <laughs> go to the website. Thank you very much. Kevin also is a um, bring your child to work dad today, so I'd like for his son to stand if you would. And it, I think the true testament to a physician when I was meeting Kevin's son this morning is a statement that I made truthfully that I would trust Kevin Boyer to cut on me or my family any day of the week. And that's a huge statement coming from a lawyer, let me tell you. <laughs> Our next category is one that is very, very special to me and to my law firm, Blaylock Walters. When the Champions of Healthcare Awards were created as the newest high profile program of the Manatee Chamber, and it was decided that we would recognize one of our community's young people for their volunteerism in the healthcare arena, our firm knew that we wanted to be a part of that. So we stepped forward as the scholarship sponsor to allow us to bestow a scholarship to the student chosen for this year's award. And I will never live this down, but I would actually like for Kevin's son and my son, two young leaders in the community, to come up to stage and help me present this award if you're okay doing that. All right, my son's not gonna do, oh, here he comes. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> You know, the youth is so, so important to the future of humanity at so many different levels. And it's just, again, an incredible honor that we at the Chamber and Blaylock Walters can help give some uh, wind to a sale of a, of a youth in our community. And our awards format called us to announce this winner of the uh, Youth Volunteer Award. We announced the finalists in the six other categories. So we already know that Zach Dunn, a 10th grader at Southeast High School, is our 2013 Champions of Healthcare Award scholarship winner. Please help me to congratulate Zach by giving him a round of applause. So we're gonna go off script again, and I'm actually gonna ask Zach to come on and join his fellow youth on stage. So you're gonna have to suffer through this here for at least five minutes. Where is Zach? Come on up, Zach. <clears throat> Before we get to the, the video, I wanna share a few incredible statistics, and these are not made up, Steve. These, are, these, are, these have been verified uh, related to, to Zach. Um, Zach has a 3.5 unweighted, for those of you in academia, you know what that means, GPA in Southeast prestigious IB program, while giving hundreds, 
hundreds of hours of his time volunteering. His FCAT scores are in the top two to five percent in the state of Florida, and he has been nominated every year since the fifth grade for the People to People Ambassador Program. He has volunteered more than 200 hours at Blake Medical Center in last summer alone. So now let's watch a short video that Wendy Rogers, Director of Volunteer Services at Blake, prepared uh, to recognize Zach. Zachary came to volunteer at 15 at Blake Medical Center. He's a young man who quickly catches on and he takes every opportunity to learn. That's one of the things that is really kind of special about teens and being able to have the opportunities that are given um, by volunteering at Blake. Zachary's favorite job was phone courier. To be a phone courier, you have to have listening skills and you have to be able to give direction. Zachary was very good at that. Usually, we don't have that young a person 15, 16, in that position because they have so much responsibility. He was wonderful. The volunteers absolutely had so much good to say about how Zach handled himself with the other volunteers and on the phone. Zachary plays with a school group that travels around the community. He plays the string bass and they play for facilities in the community uh, where they, they know how important music is for the healing process. They recently played for one of the children's hospitals. I nominated Zachary because I saw that he was a young man who had goals and he wanted to take every opportunity that was offered to him so that he could learn more about the healthcare system and how the hospital runs. So Zach, continue to make every heartbeat count, buddy. And on behalf of Blaylock Walters and the Manatee Chamber of Commerce, uh, I'd like to give you a scholarship check in the amount of $1,000 to help you uh, keep your initiatives going. Thanks guys, you get your picture taken and you're now officially heroes down there by the chamber. Thank you so much. Oh, you want to say something, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'd really like to thank the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce for this scholarship. Uh, this, uh, this means a lot to me. And I also really uh, want to thank my, my mom and Miss Wendy Wad Rogers uh, down there. Uh, I really want to uh, stay in the state, or at least somewhere in the region, uh, as I uh, explore the fields of astrophysics. And I know there's a lot of schools in the area that really want to offer something for astronomy and astrophysics and like uh, I really enjoyed uh, volunteering especially at Blake. Uh, uh, I really think that it's important to give uh, back to the community and I know that if I was in the position of uh, needing of something spe uh, specifically volunteering from someone I would I would be extremely grateful if someone volunteered uh, just to help someone such as I did. <laughs> I asked Colin if he wanted to stay up here with me. That was a pretty blunt, no. <laughs> Let's see, where am I here? And now we've come to our final award. I'd like to introduce Dan Eveloff. Dan is the line of business head for business and commercial banking with Regions Bank, 
who specializes in healthcare and healthcare finance. Regions Bank stepped forward early to support the Champions of Healthcare Awards as our top level presenting sponsor. Dan, thanks so much to you and Regions Bank for all your support and friendship. Thank you, Jonathan. First of all, I, uh, I'd like to say um, just a quick round of applause for Jonathan. He's done a phenomenal job today as MC. And I'd also like to say, after the last presentation, I know two kids in here that uh, are definitely calling in sick next year on <laughs> bringing your child to work day. So on behalf of Regions Bank, I am so pleased to be here this morning for these prestigious awards. The Champions of Healthcare Awards are helping raise the level of awareness of the amazingly positive achievements happening in Manatee County's healthcare community. I applaud all of the nominees, finalists, and winners. I know that it's been a very difficult task this year for our, for our judges, and I have a feeling that next year will be even tougher as I expect the pool of nominees to grow. I have the privilege of presenting the Champions of Healthcare Lifetime Achievement Award to Patricia M. Glass. I get to introduce a woman who really needs no introduction to you in this room, but I'll share just a few things that you may not have known about Pat. The nomination packet that we submitted used words like first, pioneer, and champion in telling about the extraordinarily long list of organizations that Pat has given her time, her talent, and treasure to over the years. It is accomplishments like hers achieved because she saw a need that should be addressed and would not tire until progress was made. That is what filled, fulfilled the vision for this Champions of Healthcare Lifetime Achievement Award, which is designated to honor an individual who, over the course of her life, his or her life, has made a significant impact in healthcare in Manatee County. So to look at just the list of Pat's involvements, rural health, West Coast AIDS Coalition, United Negro College Fund, American Lung Association, the Hope Family Services, Public Safety Council, Water Supply Authority, the Gubernatorial Appointment to Safe Children's Coalition, Special Olympics, Manatee Glens, the Red Cross, the United Way, the Florida Council on Aging. Do I need to go on? This list literally includes more than 60, yes, 60 organizations and, and leadership positions. So before we bring Pat on stage to accept this inaugural award, let's hear from Vernon Desir who will share just a bit of his personal experience working with her across the many organizations and years. The reason that I am so proud to be a part of this day and uh, in recognizing her is that, you know, uh, my knowledge of her is well beyond her political realm and her service as a, an elected official. She is just such a mentor and role model to the rest of us. Uh, that all of her lifetime, she's put everybody else first. In my lifetime, I've never seen any time that she has put herself first. She has always been fighting for everybody else. You know, years ago there was a time in our community when AIDS was not a popular subject, not something that we talked about here. And so Pat took this subject head on and she dealt with it. She made sure that uh, uh, that we addressed it. And you know, it was tough. Not everybody was um, uh, supportive of her. Uh, but it didn't matter to her. She knew that it needed to be addressed, and she addressed it. And when I think of uh, elder care, I think of child care, I think of the little children that needed clean water, I think of the people that had AIDS, I think of the, the people that were having children that were too young to have children, but she still embraced them. I think of the people even now that uh, just want to be cared for even though they've fallen on hard times, they look at Pat Glass as their advocate. And you know what? What a special legacy that is to, to know that, that people look at you in that way. So, 
Please help me in welcoming Patricia M. Glass to the stage to accept the Champions of Healthcare Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you, thank you. Watch that shoulder. <laughs> Charles is the only one that knows about my football knee. <laughs> because when you get old, you don't have any illness. You have tennis elbow, football knee, pitcher's throw, all these other things to, to mask the arthritis, and now it's out. I'm not really sure, <laughs> actually, why I'm here. Hold this, will you please? And thank God for Steve Tinsworth when he, when he said, uh, I don't know, you don't really understand why I'm here, but I do believe that I have had more heartbeats than any of you in this room. <laughs> and that's a really graceful thing. Uh, with all the talent in here, this is why people say this, why me? Because those people who kind of hide behind, most of the places we work in healthcare are in the underbelly. They're not in places people travel through. They're places that people try to avoid if they can. I'm kind of choked up. But I'm deeply grateful that you would recognize the depth of community effort that I was allowed to represent over the years. Because see, I ran for public office. And that's a wellspring of everything. There's so much to do, you don't know which room to clean first. You don't know which pile of laundry to take care of. There is no job that is not appealing, believe me. And you, you just wish you could. Uh, and you know what you do. You go out and find all your friends to do all the work. So I have to say that this is our day in Manatee, and I know Sarasota too, and the whole region, because we do work regionally, we have to. This is a day of recognition in so many ways. The people you meet here on this special morning are bound together in the best and highest use of all our talent and resources and in service. We know and recognize that business and industry, this is really true today, is tied to the well-being of every community effort, and that healthcare is a vital part of all that we achieve. Jobs are jobs. That's all we've said since 08, jobs. We need jobs. We don't want to lose doctors. We want them to come here. We want to keep these children here. So many of the things that are offsets of what you do here this morning that is going to be important. So we meet to celebrate this coming together in the name of healthy manatee. We have used that term across the board and we've initiated a very bold move right now to say there are other, way, <clears throat> other ways to think about this. There are ways in which we can engage more in this. A healthy, robust economy, environment, and human strength relies on all of us working together so I invite you to join me in yet one more endeavor, several more heartbeats, if we can. On June 18th, there will be a referendum which will sustain a lot of the darn hard work that we've put in. And since we excel in Manatee County in accountability, I think we can trust the fact that this recommendation is a good one. But please look at it and honor it. And if you want to join me in this effort, I promise this is the last thing I will ask for, is uh, there's little check uh, writing things over there, and uh, you can get them on your way out. I thought I would be over this kind of endeavor, but that's the only thing that makes it work. Sometimes you just got to ask. And uh, again, I, uh, I'm so honored 
and so grateful. And I do have to tell you that this county is light years ahead of any county in the state of Florida or the United States in the matter of caring. Now, if anybody wants to challenge that, then come and call us and tell us all that you have done because that's what's important that we talk about these kinds of things. But for a Chamber of Commerce to, to admit and go to healthcare industry and healthcare industry to go to the Chamber of Commerce and said, we need each other and we'll need each other forever and ever and ever. God bless everyone here and thank you. And now I will trot off the stage. Thank you. I love you. Sixty seconds, and then we're going to all get back to work. Um, at Blaylock Walters, we spent years coming up with our mission statement: uh, we make a difference. And every day we go to work, that's what we see when we walk in the door: is we make a difference. I turned 45 last year, and there are a few lessons you learn over 45 years. And one is, life is not always about a popularity contest. And two, stand for something or stand for nothing. And in closing, I want to share with you why the Manatee Chamber of Commerce is supporting Healthy Manatee and why we are supporting the half cent sales tax vote on June 18th. And I'm not asking for your vote today unless you're already educated. But I would ask that all of you please go to the Facebook pages, the website, for Healthy Manatee and get educated on this vote and referendum that is coming to this community on June 18th. For 2.5 billion heartbeats to continue in this community, we have a funding crisis that if you're not aware of, you need to be aware of. And in order to continue those heartbeats and the healthy community and the healthy businesses that we have in this community, get educated and learn that. And I stand before you as a proud supporter, contributor, and voter in favor of the half cent sales tax on June 18th. Stand for something or stand for nothing and make every heartbeat count. God bless you. God bless Manatee County. God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you to all uh, of what you do and have a great day. The meeting adjourned. Thank you.